This is the B-Link Sur 7 Mini PC. This space grey model is one of the sexiest 4x4 inch minis I've come across, and I've been pretty damn promiscuous over the years. Oh god, don't remind me. But today we are checking out the Sur 7, which features AMD's Ryzen 7840HS and RDNA 3 graphics. Apart from the CPU upgrade, there's also a bump up in memory speed from 4800 to 5600 natively, which helps push performance further. This one's a mean machine, alright. But is it worth the $110 US premium over the Sur 6 Max? That's what we're going to find out. In the box is a standard B-Link accessory kit. Manual, 2 HDMI, wanted amount, power supply, and screws. This fine piece of mini PC is mostly made out of metal. It looks and feels premium and is solid AF. So let's open her up. It's the exact same deal as the Sur 6 Max. Not difficult, just a whole heap of screws. There's a second M.2 Gen 4 NVMe slot you can use for additional storage. After those screws are off, carefully open it and there's 32GB of Crucial 5600 memory and a 1TB Crucial P3 Plus drive for storage with the M.2 Wi-Fi card beneath it. Ports also match the B-Link Sur 6 Max. On the front is an audio jack, USB Type-C and USB 3 10 gigabit. There's also a power button and BIOS reset. On the rear is 2.5 gigabit LAN dual USB 2, DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.1, dual USB 4, and another audio jack. Having three USB-C ports is impressive, but what if you wanted even more? Or just more ports in general? Well you can with Orico, thanks to today's ad spot. The Orico Adian 1 Type-C docking station features a transparent plus aluminium alloy design for good heat dissipation and supports power delivery up to 100 watts from a capable USB-C port like the USB 4 ports found on this mini. Simply plug it in and you'll gain an extra 3 USB 3 Type A's, HDMI out for a display up to 4K at 30Hz, Gigabit LAN, SD card reader and another USB 3 Type C. All extra USB ports on this dock will run at 5 gigabits per second. It's a pretty nice and effective way to expand the I.O. on your mini PC even further. And if your PC just doesn't have enough USB C, Orico also has an adapter which turns your Type A into a Type C. The best thing about this adapter is that it supports full 10 gigabit per second bandwidth, so you can maximize supported USB ports. Or it will of course just work at the maximum speed that is supported. This one again has an aluminium alloy shell for improved heat dissipation. Find out more with the link in the video description. B-Link includes Windows 11 Pro with this mini PC, but just like the Sur 6 Max, Ubuntu worked without issue off the USB drive on the Sur 7. One thing I do need to mention is the new magnetic power plug. It clamps on and is proprietary. I'm not a fan. While the one on the Sur 6 Max is still good as new, this one has had some damage on the plastic surrounding the insertion point. Maybe from the regular plugging in? It still works, but is pretty flimsy now unless sitting on a flat surface. Maybe a 90 degree barrel jack would have been better? Anyway, let's take a look at the benchmarks. AMD's top end mobile chips have seen a bump up in single core performance. While they don't quite match Intel yet, they're not too far off. But in this video, we're looking at how the Sur 7 compares against the Sur 6 Max specifically. And that's just over a 13% improvement. In multi-core, both B-Link Minis are at the top, and the Sur 7 takes the crown with a lead of 19% over the Sur 6. If you were wondering why it came out on top over the 7940HS, the Sur 7 is running at a higher power limit. In video encoding, the podium finish stays the same, and the improvement shrinks slightly to 14% for the Sur 7. For the 3D Mark Firestrike graphics benchmark, the Sur 7 again takes top spot by just over 10% in DX11. And in DX12, that lead jumps up to 18%. While those are decent gains, the Sur 6 Max would perform a bit better with 5600 memory if it was supported natively. I had a request to check out video editing. I'm running my 4K project here. Even though the AMD CPUs don't feature Intel's QuickSync hardware H.264 decoding, it's still pretty responsive to edit with at half resolution for preview. I could definitely get it done but I could also do it on cheaper Intel minis. It all depends on your needs and which video codec you're using. All right, let's jump into the game test. I had another request, this time for Doom Eternal. So here it is as a bonus. A 1080p low with no resolution scaling, the FPS range was 60 to 70. I only had one drop to the high 50s in my playthrough. 
Ratchet and Clank had a good bump up in frame rate over the Sir 6 Max. And that benchmark lead of almost 20% in DX12 shows up here. When it comes to integrated graphics, the only way to get 200 FPS plus with an esports style like Valorant is with AMD's RDNA 3. Forza Horizon 5 also had a decent increase in frame rate over the Sir 6 Max at around 12%. Elden Ring actually hit the frame cap of 60 FPS, which is impressive. This one had the biggest gains over the Sir 6 Max. Cyberpunk is another DX12 title with around 18% gains in frame rate. God of War again at around 12%. No, you are not ready. Stay back. The B-Link Sir 7 performs really well in emulation. Breath of the Wild is almost 60 FPS. and in the three PS3 games tested, it easily had the highest frame rate. Race complete. The USB 4 port also supported my eGPU for added graphics power. I'm using it here with an RTX 3070. The Sur 7 also had the lowest max CPU temperature at 84C. Noise levels were okay, not outstanding. It's the same cooling solution as found in the Sur 6 Max. Idle power draw came in at 8 watts, and max power draw from the wall was 97 watts, which falls in line with what you get from the higher power limits of AMD's processors. NVMe SSD temp was up quite a bit over the Sir 6 Max, but it's still under thermal throttling levels, and the sequential write speed performed much better than the 512GB drive in the Sir 6 Max. So, with all those charts out of the way, it's time to summarize the findings. I'm a fan of the design with its premium metal case. It comes with NVMe SSD cooling, which isn't as common as it should be, and also has a second M.2 Gen 4 slot. The modern port selection is great, as is performance. However, I don't like the new magnetic power plug, it's proprietary, and mine is now a bit flimsy. A bare bones option for this mini PC would be great. So, you're getting faster memory and a faster CPU. But whether the 110 US dollar price increase over the Sir 6 Max is worth it depends on what you're using it for. You'll have to make that decision. And if you haven't already, why not check out my B-Link Sir 5 Max review for a cheaper but less premium mini PC. Cheers.